Hey guys, and welcome back to another Java programming tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be going over uh, kind of class variables and the keyword static. So you may have seen that we've used static in a few things in like our main uh, thing here. Actually, I got to delete all this. Uh, it says static right here. And no one's really explained, or I guess I haven't really explained what static means. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So let's get started and talk about class variables. So right now we have something called attributes, guys. Okay? So we have these two attributes, which are specific to each instance of our dog. So when we created multiple dog objects, each dog had their own name and their own age, and other dogs were not affected when we changed one of the dog's name or one of the dog's age, unless that dog was them, obviously, right? Um, and that's great because we can have a ton of different values that are specific to different objects or different instances of this dog class. Now, sometimes, we want to have variables that will change or are the same for each instance. Uh, so we can change them in one instance. And if we do change them in one instance, they will change in the other. Now, those are known as class variables, not instance variables, because instance variables are like kind of attributes. OK, the way that we can create these class variables is we can do something like this. So I'm going to say protected again, say protected. Uh, and by the way, I'm just in my dog class. I deleted a bunch of stuff out of it uh, just to make it a bit easier to work in. And I still have the cat class, but it's just uh, I'm not using it for this video. OK, so we'll say protected static int uh, count equals zero. Now, I know that that is a mouthful, but what we're doing here essentially is we're creating a class variable, uh, which is an int named count equals zero, which is protected. OK, well, I know it's a lot of keywords. But what does the static keyword do? So what this is actually going to do is it's going to allow us to statically change count, which means it's not going to change for each instance. It's only going to change, um, or sorry, it it'll change uh, like all together, right? So what I was explaining before, and that's what this static keyword is going to allow us to do. So we don't actually care about what instance this variable is a part of. We just care that it's a part of the dog class. All right. So if I want to change this value x, well, I do need still need to call this uh, and I can say this dot count equals and then or actually I'm going to say plus equals one. OK, because what I want to do with this count here, I'm going to say static field dog should be accessed in a static way. Uh, okay, let's just do this one second. Okay, uh, what I'm doing here, sorry, one second, I'll explain this, is I'm just going to add one to this count because I want to keep track of how many dogs we have. So that if I wanted to, I don't know, like see how many dogs have been created, I could just simply call like dog.count and then uh, figure that out, right? So what I'm doing here, instead of calling this dot count, which does actually work, is I'm calling dog dot count because since this is a static uh, variable or static, yeah, static variable, class variable, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't actually care about what instance I'm changing it on because it's going to change for all the instances. So I can actually use the name of the class to change it. And that's why it gave me that little yellow line. I'm not sure if you guys read that. It said we should do this in a static way uh, because, well, it's a static variable. So I could, however, call like this dot count, right? And that would work fine because uh, this well, is an instance of the dog class. So it knows where to look for the variable count, but it's much better to do dog dot count like plus equals one. Okay. Now I'm going to prove this to you that this does indeed uh, actually work. I'm not just making things up. So let's create some dog objects here. Uh, let's say Tim or dog. Tim equals uh, new. Wow, the typing is not great today. New dog, and we'll just say Tim, and uh, let's go nine for age, and we'll just copy this. And what should we do? Let's do Bill maybe. We'll say Bill, and that is new dog name. Bill, age ten. Okay. Now since this uh, static variable here is protected, I can actually access it from main. So what I'm going to do to change count now or to print count out first of all, is I'll prove to you that uh, system system dot out dot print ln. I keep thinking we're in Python here. And I'll just simply print out dog dot count like this. Okay. And just see what we get as a value first of all. Okay, so we get two. So uh, we already know that this is indeed working because well, when we added one to count, uh, if it was this different for each one, then it would just be one. But anyways, and if I want to change dog dot count, what I can do is I can say dog dot count, uh, let's say equals like seven. Okay. And that's fine. That works. If I print out uh, dog dot count, we get seven. Now I'll show you too. If I do like Tim dot count, uh, this will give us the same answer. So you can see we get seven, even though in Tim, uh, we didn't do anything with Tim to change count since it's a dog 
part of the dog class. It has this count variable and it's changing obviously within Tim as well. Okay, so that's kind of how the class variables work. Now time to talk about static methods, okay? So this was a static variable or class variable. I like to call it class variable just because that's what I'm used to, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, now we're gonna talk about static methods and what that is. So it's very similar to this, uh, kind of the way that this works, uh, but is a little different. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna type public static void uh, display, okay? And in here, all I'm going to do is simply do uh, system, dot out dot print ln and I'll just print I am a dog okay so what this is doing now is I'm saying static void uh, display now in here uh, what's gonna happen essentially is we don't need an instance to call this so I can actually just call this on the uh, the dog class so I can say like dog dot uh, display like this and since it's a static method this works fine and this will indeed say I am a dog. Now, as opposed to if this was a regular method, so let's just make a regular method to kind of do a comparison here. So let's say public void, and we'll say uh, display two, okay? And we'll literally just take this and put it word for word in here, uh, just to show you the difference. So now watch what happens if I try to do uh, dog dot display two. You can see that we're getting a red line and saying that we need to make this static because we need an instance to call display to, meaning that we need to have first created a dog object, and then we can use that dog object to call display to, or we can do like this dot display to, and that works fine because that's calling it on the instance, right? Because this represents the instance that we're using. So um, the static is going to allow us to call it just simply using dog. But the thing with static is it has no uh, way to access our uh, what do you call it? Our values or our attributes, right? So if I wanted to access like a dog's name or a dog's age, well, I can't do that from a static method. Like I can't type like this dot age. That just simply doesn't work because if you think about it, well, what what uh, what instance are we calling it on? There's no instance. We're just simply calling it on the dog class. So we have no idea what age to look for or what name to look for. So the only time we use static methods is when we don't care about the instance and we just want to do something and we want to store it within that class. You can almost think of it as a function uh, if you if you know other programming languages, um, but that is ideally how static works. So whenever you want to be able to call something and you don't care about the uh, like the instance, you don't care about the attributes, you can make it static, and that way you can call it without having an instance. Um, so yeah. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I'll quickly go over what this void does one more time in case anyone forgets. Remember in our functions we can return values. When you put void, all this does is say we're not returning anything. We're just going to do something, right? So we could be like manipulating an array or in this case, printing something up to the screen, okay? Or maybe getting like input from the user, but we're just not returning any value back to uh, the call statement. So anyways, as always, if you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave a comment down below or join my Discord server. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in another one.